Tango friends. Welcome to my studio in Estes Park, Colorado. I want to tell you a little bit about my amazing experience last week. I'm a little bit late in posting because I was immersed in four days of fun tangling with amazing artists from all over the world, Zentangle CZTs, Certified Zentangle Teachers. I taught there, but I also learned several. I took all the classes and learned several new techniques, learned to use some new fun tools, uh, new supplies, and I can't wait to show you uh, some of the things that we did. If you go to my student Facebook page, you'll see all of the projects that we did. I'm posting them one at a time, but I, I want to take that with me and let it mull a bit, ruminate, and come up with some other spin-off creative ideas for you for the YouTubes that I'm doing. Today we're going to do kind of a simple project that's sticking with our spring theme. Tomorrow is the 1st of May and we concentrate on flowers and fertility and new life. And this pattern that I'm doing kind of reminds me of a cluster of poppies. And it's a two part series on today. We're going to just learn to tangle and shade. And the next time bring what you've done and I will show you how I will color my poppies. Um, I'm calling this, it's actually a, what we refer to in the Zentangle world as a fragment and a reticula. That is a reticula, which is a net-like structure that would hold fragments, patterns, and by putting them in this reticula, they create another whole pattern called a meta pattern. And in this case, it's like a cluster of blooms. So I'm calling it Pangea Pepper Blooms because Pangea is the reticula that we're using to put the pepper-like tangle inside to create this new look. So without further ado, let's get on our Pangea Pepper Blooms. So for this part one of our little series here. I'm just using a micron pen. I've got both an O1 and a PN, the plastic nib pen, because we will be filling in some larger areas. And then I've got my tortillon and a soft graphite pencil and always, always, always my kneaded eraser. So the Zendala is what I'm starting with today, but any anything will work. Even if you just draw um, a circle with a compass on a white piece of paper, that'd be fine. I am going to divide my comp my this area and I'm using a two and a half inch template circle that I cut out myself. So I'm just going to lay that on there and draw sort of like what we consider a string. I just want to know where our Pangea is going to be clustered and this will help us define that. So where we're going today is here. This is, this is our project, you saw it in the intro. And what it is, is just basically Pangea as the reticula, then we're filling in that reticula with the pattern, sort of pepper. And then I just added a little Samson leaf here for a compositional interest, and then did a little bit of um, doodah. These are all uh, Zentangle patterns, by the way, from our headquarters. So that's where we're heading. Let me just show you Pangea. Here is Pangea in Mirth. This is a sample I did a while ago. It's definitely was all the rage when it first came out. And how beautiful is that? But also, it is so much fun to make. These little irregular shapes, you don't have to think about much. Uh, it's got a lot of Zen flow to it. So we are going to do something similar. This is what inspired me. But we're not going to do our Mirth quite on the Pangea, rather something more like pepper. So let's just get started with our O1 micron pen. So Pangea goes like this, is nothing more than an irregular shape, kind of like an amoeba. Then the next step is to make another one, but it's going to be building off this first one with an aura line. So I'm gonna aura and then take off and always make my Pangea a little bit almost circular. 
if you can. That one got a little elongated, but that's okay. And we're just gonna go all the way around and fill in this space with the same method. Okay, now I'm going to do a little smiley face in the middle, just like we do with Mirth. And then I'm going to do another one and kind of cap that off with a dome shape. And I'm going to put little tiny tipple or perfs in there. Same thing here. You can, if you have room, you can make these little lines that indicate another texture. And it looks quite a, bit, a lot like an actual poppy center. So here we go again. I am turning and orienting my little shapes in different directions. That brings in some so this one's going this direction. This one I'm going to orient this way. Brings in some movement. You can just leave it like this too, if you'd rather. That's how I did in my sample. Especially if you're drawing really small. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I kind of like that this little pattern, this line work in that center is sort of going to be mimicking the pepper pattern that we're going to do. Another pattern I like to put in the center of those is the pattern Lunar Flux, but it will make it really hard for us to color and shade, but I do love adding Lunar Flux uh, anthers is what we call them, or the whole thing is a stamen with the anthers and the filament. So that's an idea for later. Okay, so now comes our pepper part. and. Always when we make this, we want to make sure that we're going to bow our line. We don't want to make it straight. By bowing it, we're giving our little flower some movement, some undulations, some three dimension. And all it is is basically coming from the center and making almost a triangular shape in this kind of wavy way. Pepper is actually a little different in that it wraps around the edge. And I tried that for this, but I didn't like the way it looked. It got too busy. So I am just doing it like this. I'm not doing a true pepper. It's more stripes. And then we're going to get out our PN pen and fill in each stripe. Take your time, enjoy coloring. So see how this is curved? You imagine the leaf comes up and then it undulates down. And that's what's going to give this almost the illusion of it being an actual in furling petal. I'm going to do the same thing for all of them. Okay. 
I shouldn't have colored that in because then you can see that this actually looks very pretty on its own without making the striping. Um, it's a little more airy, very pretty. But when we go to coloring this in the warm orange and red tones, uh, it, it, it looks great with the black, right? Because black and red, nothing more beautiful than that. So rather than filling this whole area in, this negative space where the Pangea line work is, uh, I thought it was kind of a pretty idea to make some more perfs because they also reiterate those little circles, those little perfs up here in the center. So that's what I'm going to do. You can just leave it. You can color it a different color. You can color it in black, but then you're going to lose the definition of these little uh, blossoms. So just going in between, making different sized perfs. That's what we call tipple. Before I can continue doing that, I am gonna put, with a pencil, I'm gonna put a line down here where I know I want my Samson leaf. To go and then maybe pencil in some of the little veins drawing behind is always pretty back to the tipple and as you go you can do it two ways you can make all of your tipple first and then go back in and fill in those little tiny areas that are a result of the circles being placed next to each other. We call those little areas interstices. I'm going to make a big one. I'm going to stop because we're going to be putting my Samson uh, in there. You can always backfill with these tipple. That's what's beautiful about them. And it's a nice uh, calming stroke. This is actually almost a big enough project for an actual class. But you'll have a whole week to work on this, so just take your time, do a segment at a time whenever you have a chance. Oh wait, that would have been part of my leaf. So I'm going to stop there on that one. Actually, I think it'd be a good time now to go ahead and ink in my Samson. So I did a whole tutorial on Samson and I'm just going to go ahead and do it quickly here. If you need to watch it, go back to Samson. I'll link it in the description below. It's one of my favorite tangles because it's so very botanical. So none of this would get the tipple. So always have to imagine what's behind. And we're going to lift that with the color. You'll, you'll understand it better once we get our colors in. You'll see better where it, where it rests behind the design.
You also want to fill in those little areas black around your perfs here in the centers. Clean up all those little white specks that are showing through on your paper and we are ready to shade. I did on my sample, I did go around and I made an aura line. Actually, this would probably be better to do with the PN. And you can play around with this frame. I know some of you out there do those really fun any oaken type frames. Especially if it gets wobbly and wonky, you can do some thick and thin, some little white specks in between. And then I also did the same thing around here. I think it just gives it a nice frame, but you can leave it if you'd, if you'd rather not have an orid center. It's your own design decision. And you can just leave it like that and or you can put other things in there as I did here. I used Duda, which is kind of a fun, a fun look. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then here you can see that alternative center, but it really only works in a large, large bloom. So you could just do one big bloom like that and it would look like this. Uh, but for that small area, it gets very, very busy and then you won't be able to easily shade and color next time. So I would, I would stick to this pattern if you're following along. Uh, I also made myself some notes here in my sketchbook. I said, uh, idea would work as a fun Zen button. Those of you who know what Zen buttons are, you've got that kind of going on here with the shading. Uh, Lunar Flex is a great center, which I just showed you. And yeah, now we can shade. And so we're going to put some graphite all the way around and a little bit out here. And I'll show you why. This is how I'm going to shade mine kind of almost botanically. I'm going to draw out my graphite lightly with this tortillon and I'm going to keep it concentrated kind of in the center and you see why this is almost making it look like this petal is dipping down and then the, the sides are hitting the light so it looks actually like a real petal getting really dark dark at the top and then leaving some light on the sides of this petals. So once again, I kind of like to use that almost eyelash stroke here coming off the center. And I'm barely, it's like a whisper of a touch. I'm not pushing hard at all on my tortillon. And as I teach always, if you get something too dark and you don't like it, just go back in and lift and reblend. Just keep lifting and reblending until you get the exact amount of graphite that you want. So I decided to go ahead and load all of the graphite first and then come back and do the blending. That way I get kind of in a rhythm for both things. Okay.
So now we're going to do Samson, but I'm not going to explain it to you. I'd encourage you to go back and look at my tutorial on Samson. I'm just going to quickly shade it and finesse it with some dark darks and light lights of uh, some pen work. So I'm just going to now go back in. That's pretty much all the shading. I'm not going to shade this as a Zen button. I'm not going to shade it at all. I'm going to leave that up to you. You can get creative with what you put in this area or leave it. It's nice negative space too. But I am going to add a little bit of thick and thin line here and there like on my uh, Samson's and clean up all those little perf areas. Okay, I'm going to call that done and I will see you next time when we will color with some color layering. It's um, a technique we use in Botanica Illustration with Grisaille. This is our Grisaille. This is our underpainting and we will, I will show you how I color layer on top of that to get kind of a realistic look. So thanks for joining me today and have fun. Take your time this week and just do a segment at a time. I know this wasn't a 20 minute lunchtime tangle as I used to do, but you'll have a nice finished project, I think. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. That's it for today's tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle Alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.